Okay, welcome back to Pride Fit. Today we are talking about Fabletics. So this is a Fabletics clothing haul. I got a bunch of clothes from Fabletics and I also did a bunch of research on the company because I think that us understanding where we are getting these clothes from and the quality uh, is just as important as the style and the functionality of these clothes. So let's hop right into it. I don't wanna waste your time. Let's just go through our pros and cons list really quickly and then I'll try on some clothes and then we'll kind of recap everything with if Fabletics is a company that you should be buying from or not. Starting with the pros, Fabletics is a really inexpensive clothing option for fitness clothes. And as we know, I know that you know, fitness clothes are super expensive. If we look at Lululemon or we look at Noble, what I'm wearing right now, you know, they are very expensive options and it's just one more hurdle to getting people in the gym. You know, if people can't afford the best clothing or they don't feel confident in their clothing, uh, that's just another reason for you to say like, well, I'm not going to the gym today, right? So that's a big problem. And Fabletics, I will say, you know, comparatively to Gymshark, which I reviewed in this video, feels like a much better product across the board. The other thing I'll say is that the shorts at Fabletics are really good across the board. I can't make any other really generalized suggestions like, oh, the tanks are really good too, because there were like some good pieces here and there, but the shorts across the board, really good. Another pro is that the clothes actually came, not to talk about Gymshark too much, but you know, I never ended up getting a lot of the clothes for Gymshark and I had a whole hullabaloo with their customer service team. Okay, we're gonna have to try this again later. So it took, you know, two weeks for me to get all of my Fabletics clothes. They came in two shipments, uh, but they did all come and they were all correct. So that's great. And the other thing that we will get into a little bit later is that Fabletics does a really good job with inclusive sizing and they have a really diverse team. They follow through on their diverse initiatives. So. That's really great. Again, we'll hop into that more toward the end of this video. Going into the cons, you know, I said that the quality is better than Gymshark across the board and I believe that, but it still does feel like the H&M of fitness clothing where the clothes just could use a little more care in the manufacturing, in the materials. Some of them felt like they were really solid, but then other times, you know, I'd be testing the zipper and it would get stuck. My first time using it and it would get stuck, right? Sometimes, I'm questionable about the materials, but that being said, I do think that this is a better option than a Gymshark. The one thing that really turned me off when I was ordering these clothes is that Fabletics is on a subscription model and I'm still really trying to figure it out. Basically, on the sixth of each month, you get charged $49.95 to be part of their subscription. And I guess in there you get a free top and a free bottom. And if you don't want those, then you can like log in to the website between the first of the month and the fifth of the month, very small window, and you can say that you can skip that month and then they won't charge you. Super weird, Fabletics has like a bunch of like fake sales going on. They always have sales going on, right? And the only way to take advantage of those sales is to be a member, right? Is to be part of the subscription service. So I was like, okay, I'll do what I do for any other subscription service where you use it for this order, right? And then I will cancel it right away so I don't forget. And when I tried to go and cancel it, so I got someone on the phone right away, which was great. Um, and I said, hey, I would love to cancel my subscription because I, I'm not gonna be making another purchase through Fabletics. And they said, oh, you can't cancel until your order has arrived because otherwise we will cancel your order, which I think is, again, just like super annoying for a company to do. Like they already know that the subscription model for clothing, that's been proven to like just not be good. It doesn't work. We don't want it, right? We want to order clothes when we want to order clothes. So, and then secondly, not allowing me to cancel it until my order arrived. So I'd forget and then get charged and then have to like go through it all over again. It's just bullshit. I hate it when companies do this kind of thing. And so that was definitely a con for Fabletics. And then I don't want to get too in the weeds with this, but there, ethical and environmental scores are just fine. You know, there are companies that are worse, there are companies that are better, but that's something that I would like for Fabletics to focus on a little bit more. If they're going to be doing this fast fashion stuff, this kind of clothing that uh, isn't super sustainable or recyclable, I would want them to be focusing a little bit more on the environment, a little bit more on their ethics. Okay, that's enough of that. Let's jump into the actual clothing review. Okay, so the first thing that I tried on in my order was the one short without the liner. I got these in extra small. I also got them in um, this blue color. And honestly, I really like these. I think that they're a good 
fit. I think that they, I did the five inch inseam and like I said, I did the extra small because I wanted to try the extra smalls and the small and kind of see if their sizing was super accurate. And I would say that the extra smalls were the winner here. Uh, I'm glad that I did that for these because generally I would have picked a small and the smalls that I tried on were just a little too big for me. I think that the material is good. It's a little bit of a thicker material, which I kind of like for working out in. The only thing that was just okay to me was the zippers. They have pretty deep pockets and they have two zipper pockets. But like I said, these zippers didn't feel like they were super well made. When I was unzipping them and zipping it back up, it was getting stuck. And that's just not what you wanna see, right? That, you don't want that to be your first impression with the shorts because I've had a pair of shorts where like, I've gotten stuff lost in them before and you have to like rip it out. And I, I don't, I would honestly prefer for there not to be a zipper than to have a shitty zipper, so. Alrighty, here we have the front row sleeveless tee, and for this one I actually did a small instead of an extra small, and that was the right call. I was a little surprised uh, when I tried this on. It was a thicker material than I usually do for a tank top, but I was okay with it. I can't really imagine myself going on a run or doing a workout in that kind of tank top, which I guess is like the point, right? I'm not gonna just like wear this out to dinner, right? So I guess that was a little weird because it's definitely a thicker material. And I know that generally I'm looking for that, like for that quality or that thicker material, but it seemed a little counterintuitive in this instance. A tank top really should be lightweight. And it says like moisture wicking and everything like that, but I would say this was a no for me. It's nice that it's $29.95, you know, like that's not super expensive for a tank, so that's good. But I would still look for something, just a little bit of a lighter material. These are the fundamental shorts with a liner. So I was actually really pleasantly surprised with the liner. I really liked it. I liked the look of it. I liked the feel of it. I can usually take or leave liners. Uh, but I got this color because it was one of the only colors that they had a five inch inseam with. You know, I'm a big fan of a five inch inseam. The seven inch, don't get me started. I, I don't understand why they even make them. <laughs> but I tested the small for these. And you'll see that along the waist, it is just about like an inch or two too big, which is so surprising. Like I should fit into a small instead of an extra small, right? But these smalls are just a little bit bigger. So just something to consider. Again, $44.95 for a pair of shorts. It's like right smack dab in the middle. That being said, you do need to kind of take into account that it's supposed to be something like 70 bucks for the pair of shorts, but only with your membership credit is it the decreased price, right? A business model, again, that annoys me, but alas, this is where they are. In terms of the color, I wouldn't have necessarily picked this color. They don't have that many options for five inch shorts. So I gave it a try, and honestly, I think I would keep them. If they were the right size, I think I would wear these uh, just as like a splash of color. You're really like a highlighter at the gym. Uh, they're kind of fun. I like it. Okay, the one jogger. These are $59.99. Altogether, not a bad price for joggers. That being said, you know, I'm a little bit of a jogger snob. And these are a good example of the material being too light. I, you can tell that they would not go through wear and tear very well. Uh, you can move pretty well in them, I would say, uh, but I wouldn't do actual workouts in them. These would be like a jogger that you would warm up in versus a jogger that I would go for a run in or a jogger that I would actually do a full workout in. Um, I did a small for these, and I think that was the right call. It seems like they fit pretty well. Uh, maybe I could have done an extra small, but the small seemed like it was a, a good fit. The training day long sleeve tee is weird. I was really hoping that I would love this. I've been in a green kick lately, and I was like, ah, Great. You know, I am colorblind, so like take this with a grain of salt, but uh, I tried on this green long sleeve t-shirt and the color was just kind of off-putting to me. It wasn't that color green that I was like, oh, that's really beautiful and that's really lovely. It just felt off to me. So that was kind of strike number one. Strike number two is that I have a hard time with long sleeve t-shirts. I did a small for this and it was the right length. It was the right way around my midsection, but the shoulders were definitely a little too tight and the arms were a little too tight. The material also just felt a little restrictive in general. Just again, uh, an example of this material that they pick not being something that's super conducive for working out. Something where I need to like be able to move my arms a lot 
and where I want to reduce chafing if I'm running and it's cold outside, this wouldn't be like a cold weather long sleeve t-shirt that I would wear. It's even more on sale right now, it's $27.96. Um, even though it is a cheap long sleeve t-shirt, I wouldn't necessarily go for it. The training day tank. Yo, I had high, high hopes for this. And it was the same thing as the last tank. It's a different model, and yet it still had the same problem where the material just didn't feel like an athletic material. It was thick in a way that I didn't want it to be now. And you're like, gosh, I can't win, right? But it just feels like they're picking materials that were cheap to use versus materials that are good to use for the specific product. It seemed like, yeah, it had like stretch to it, but if I were to sweat in it at all, that heavy material would get even heavier. I'm not interested in that. By that point in time, I'd be like, well, I'm just taking my shirt off anyway. Uh, what's the point, right? So unfortunately, it's a zero for two for tanks at Fabletics for me. The lightweight go-to jogger. Y'all, these are actually really great. You know, as the jogger stop, like I said, these gray sweatpants are, I think I got them in like soft pine or something. They're so comfortable. They're not like overly expensive or that well made, but they are just, you know, like a classic jogger that for 60 bucks, you could get good usage out of this as like a warm up pant that you're putting over your shorts. If you live in the Midwest, you know what I'm talking about. And then you take them off when you're ready to work out. It's not a workout pant whatsoever. That's a cottony material. Uh, so they would get really heavy, no. But generally, if you're wearing these around the house or you're wearing them to the gym, big fan of these joggers. I guess I was hoping that just trying a different color of the same model would be better, and I think it was worse, so. <laughs> Weirdly enough, the color of this one I think is better, but this is the training day long sleeve tee, and I felt like the collar of it was even worse. It felt really loose. Same thing, the material just wasn't really right. It felt like the shoulders were really too small and that I was gonna have a lot of like armpit chafing because the seam was gonna come too high up to my armpit. It's a zero for two for the long sleeve shirts as well. Unfortunately, the tops for Fabletics, not for me, not for me. Okay, I'm glad that I tried out another pair of the one short because it really solidified that these are a great pair of shorts. I honestly think next time I would get them with the liner. And like I said, they have less in stock for the five inch inseam, but anything you can find with the five inch inseam, I think these shorts are super high quality and I would definitely wear them for all of my workouts. So really highly suggest the one short and you know, play around with lots of different colors. They've got tons of different colors that are like a little funky. So you can do something funky on the bottom and then um, a little bit more neutral on the top. And I'm a big fan. I swear to God, it sounds like I'm just making gay jokes. I'm not. These are the 24-7 boxer briefs. I looked through all of these patterns, which I kind of hate, and I was looking for a three-inch inseam because I was like, I don't need a five-inch inseam underwear. So I found like one, I'm pretty sure that this one was in stock uh, with a three-inch inseam, and I ordered it and it was bad. It's not a good underwear at all. It doesn't even get close to making my list of best gym underwear. Uh, it's a cottony underwear. Already not a big fan for the gym. Also, you do squats and they just like bunch up. You see, not a fan of these underwear at all. I would not buy these. And the patterns are like, no, no. We're gonna say no here. <laughs> and then here are the crew socks. I got a medium slash large and they fit pretty well. They are just socks. I'm like, I'm gonna stop doing accessories for these videos because they're normally bad from these companies. I don't know, like, go to Kohl's. I, do something that's not expensive, but like, these are never like that good of an option. So I'm like, no, we don't need to do this anymore. <laughs> no more socks, <laughs> probably no more underwear until I do another video on like testing a bunch of different underwear because Fabletics, Gymshark, like, I don't need your accessories anymore, I think. Whew, okay, and that is all of the clothes that I tried for Fabletics. Stick around because we just have a few more talking points about the company itself. One of the things that I am a big fan of Fabletics for is that they say that they have inclusive sizing and they actually follow through on it. A lot of companies do not actually follow through, but they do carry extra, extra small up to 4XL. Uh, which is great. I think that all companies should be doing this and it makes me really happy that I tried Fabletics and that I kind of went into the research of how they look at inclusive sizing because I think that is really, really important. In terms of sustainability, they do claim that their stores are carbon neutral, which is, you know, kind of moot because almost all of their sales are online. So that's like, 
eh, they're trying to do better with their packaging. But I would really like to see Fabletic step up their sustainability when it comes to the production of their clothes and delivering their clothes. The other thing that I'll say is that, you know, they're all about this subscription model, which I get from a business standpoint, super smart, right? But when it comes to clothes, it's saying like, we're gonna send you clothes each month as opposed to you're going to get clothes when you need them. And that in itself is really bad from a sustainability standpoint. You don't need clothes sent to you every month. You need to order clothes when you need clothes, right? Because that is going to be the sustainable option. And that means that this subscription model is never going to be the most sustainable option as a company. And then lastly, in terms of ethics, I think that all clothing companies need to do a better job of this, of just being as transparent as possible with their manufacturing. It seems from the research that I did that their clothes are made in Asia, but they don't let us know a lot more than that. They say that they don't use child labor. Great, you know, hopefully not. But again, without this transparency, we actually have no idea how these clothes are being manufactured. And more and more, that's becoming something that I care about, and I'm sure that it's something that you are caring about. So that is something that I'd really like for Fabletics to open up about. You know, if these practices for manufacturing are ethical, then you should have no problem opening up and being transparent about them, right? So hopefully that changes in the future. Hopefully the next Fabletics video I do, um, I'll have a lot more information about that. Thank you so much for watching this video on Fabletics. If you want me to check out another company, don't forget to leave me a comment below and subscribe to my channel. But otherwise, I'll see you back next time.